And we are now live and recording. So we'll let everybody get in here. I wanna make sure, let me know. I'm gonna start it from the slide. Let me know that you can see it from, you see it? Yep. Okay, all right. So welcome to the Wild Sheep Foundation Youth Programs. We're here with Dr. Ryan Brock today, um, brought to you by the Nevada Department of Wildlife. Your host today is Dr. Ryan Brock. He is the Youth Wildlife Program Director with the Wild Sheep Foundation. And I'm gonna do the moderating and you will hear some of my voice in the background through here. I am the Hunter and Archery Education Coordinator with the Nevada Department of Wildlife. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Thank you. I've got background noise. Sorry, I have my kiddos in the background. Um, <laughs> thank you for joining the Nevada Department of Wildlife for a conservation education program. This program is family friendly and rated PG. Profanity or inappropriate behaviors will not be tolerated in the chat or Q&A. All questions in the chat and Q&A should be on topic. Failing to result in these guidelines can result in being muted from the chat, Q&A, or completely removed from the live stream. So just a loose agenda to get us kicked off. A big welcome to our participants and to Dr. Ryan Brock for joining us today. We're gonna to be covering the ins and outs of, ooh, I needed to fix that, the Wild Sheep Foundation and the Youth Wild Sheep Foundation experience with Dr. Ryan Brock. We are anticipating about 30 to 45 minutes along with questions. If you have any questions, please drop them in the Q&A box and I will get to them or direct them to Dr. Brock. Following this webinar, you will receive a link for the survey. We encourage you to fill it out, give us your feedback and let us know what you would like to see more of. So without further ado, I will let Dr. Brock introduce himself. Hi there, I'm Ryan Brock and uh, glad to be here today. Thank you for those of you who are joining us live. Um, I'm a fifth grade teacher here in Reno, Nevada. Uh, I'm going on my 22nd year of teaching and I've always been excited about the outdoors, grew up in the outdoors myself and had a family always involved with that. And I've started um, about 15 years ago, really getting my classroom into the outdoors. We started doing nature clubs and duck clubs and turkey clubs and that eventually led to a thesis looking at after school nature clubs and eventually ended up uh, getting me hired with the Wild Sheep Foundation as their youth education coordinator. A um, little bit about uh, my position is it's pretty new. We didn't have uh, an education coordinator until 2011 and we had a lady running it for about a year and then she moved on and they hired me um, because we have usually our national convention, the Sheep Show in Reno, and they were looking for a teacher that might be able to help organize a big youth event as part of the uh, annual convention with that. And so we kind of started with a little bit of grant money from Larry and Brenda Potterfield uh, from Midway USA Foundation. And eventually that has grown into um, a big part of our funding uh, to where we do now events all over with banquets as well as um, here in Reno with all of our chapters and stuff around the nation with that. So um, uh, before COVID the last year, 2018-19, we, we had about 22,300 youth impacted from our events with that. Um, that's a little bit about me. You know, if we look at the Wild Sheep Foundation, we're a small wildlife conservation group. Uh, we only have about 9,800 members uh, in the United States, Canada, uh, Mexico, and a couple around the world. Uh, we were started in 1974 by a group of uh, wild sheep enthusiasts, predominantly hunters, who just noticed their decline. And they started doing little fundraising uh, events and became known as the uh, FNAS, Foundation for North American Wild Sheep. And in 2008, FNAS formally became the Wild Sheep Foundation uh, as our efforts started growing worldwide to impact ungulates in positive ways. So uh, glad to be here today and tell you a little bit about some of our youth programs that we do here in the state of Nevada. Thank you, Ryan. That was a great start. I want to welcome Nicola and Roberta. They're just joining us right now. So a little welcome there. All right. So some of the events that Endow partners with, with the Wild Sheep Foundation, we're gonna run through those. I'm gonna let Ryan do most of the talking. 
But the first one and the largest one is the sheep show and the youth experience. So I'll let Ryan delve into that a little bit. Yeah, so this was kind of our first major partnership. We had a little bit of money just to kind of start uh, just a, a one event a year at our sheep show. And it was in January of 2012. And I uh, wasn't on the planning part of it. I ended up kind of organizing some uh, my classroom to come. And uh, we ended up coming. Uh, they had some other school groups come in. But that first year, we had about 120 kids uh, attend. Uh, Indel's always been a big part of that event. Um, probably running half or more of the program, um, especially that first year there. Uh, eventually, it's morphed over the years. It's a three-day event where now we bus in kids from the Reno area on Thursday and Friday. We pay for uh, the buses. We pay for the luncheons at the convention center. And we start off the day, usually on those Thursdays and Fridays, by uh, a seminar on what is wildlife conservation and how does conservation um, impact wild sheep, especially the aspect of us being um, a hunting organization. There's a, a lot of thoughts out there on how can hunters actually be conservationists. So we kind of really come in with kind of talking about our background, what we do and how our efforts lead to conservation of sheep. Uh, then we break it up and we have three different sessions uh, dealing with career seminars. And we try to find people in the outdoors who are experts in their profession um, that are careers that maybe kids don't know existed or, or know a little bit about. And so we have a whole bunch of uh, volunteers that come in. We do three sessions. Um, and each session, the student gets to choose which seminar to attend. And the seminars are 20 minutes long. So by the end, they will have seen three different outdoor careers. Um, and there's nine to choose from. Uh, we come back for lunch. And at lunch, we have usually a younger speaker. Um, a graduate student and an undergraduate student who are majoring in wildlife conservation. And they kind of tell their story and how they got to where they're at, why they're passionate about going into the field they're going into, um, and then answer some questions and give some pointers on where students can go if they want to take that route as a career. And then the afternoon opens up kind of the fun time. We uh, bring in uh, well over 100 volunteers and end up having, you know, the last time we did a live in-person event, we had about 30 different stations that the kids rotate through. And that's where you kind of connect um, that outdoor passion to doing something, to try to get kids off the couch and, and get excited about nature and getting out there preserving it with that. So Department of Wildlife has always been a huge aspect and part of that. And Don, is there anything that you wanted to say before maybe we talk about some of the exact uh, events that we do on those hands-on activities. Okay, so just a pinpoint, this event is free to the public, correct? Correct, yes. And we've had our convention, luckily, in Reno um, since, you know, before I was hired on. So it's been here well over a decade. Um, we're going on our 10th year was this past year. So we've been doing this, this Youth Wildlife Conservation Experience, or YWCE, we like to call it. And it is, it's free to the public. And in fact, um, the past five or six years, if you bring a kid to it, we give a voucher to the parents to actually get into the sheep show exhibit hall for free, which, you know, is, a, is about a 15 or $20 pass to get in. So it's definitely a win-win for everybody. Exactly, exactly. And my favorite part is every year, no matter what booth I am at, we have people come through that have never been exposed to these things. They've never seen, you know, these deadheads. They've never seen, um, they've never, you know, flung a fishing pole. They've never shot a bow, any of these things. And they're all hands-on experience. Can you, you want to talk a little bit about those booths? That yeah, we have? yeah, absolutely. So at the hands-on stations, you know, we reach out um, and Department of Wildlife definitely helps us supply a lot of volunteers. Um, one station we have is just is, is tables of skulls and hides and replica tracks and scat. Um, and, you know, a lot of the kids that are busted in on those the Thursday and Friday, um, you know, they haven't had experiences in that. Um, Saturday, I forgot to mention, is open to the public. That's the day where anyone can come. Usually we have over a thousand kids just on Saturday um, alone um, with that. And 
Um, so there's the hands on hides and skulls, we like to call it. Uh, we have a bunch of archery. And so usually we do a target archery where they're shooting at just your basic target. Um, the last time we did it, we had a 3D kind of mini archery tournament where we had about nine target ups, targets up there. And they actually learned to shoot their bows at different little distances and learned how to score themselves. So by the time they were done, they actually had a score. And we gave out little medals at the end um, for those that you know had the highest scores. We have a Velcro archery. So they shoot these arrows with little Velcro discs and there's actually a tic-tac-toe board. And so they're competing against someone else. And when the arrows hit, it's magnetic. And so the arrow drops and leaves the little Velcro disc on there. And then we have two stations of hover archery. And that's where it's this blow up range and these balls are floating on pockets of air. And the goal is to use these arrows with these Nerf heads on it to bump the uh, balls that are floating in the air and knock them off. And that's, that's a real popular one. So archery is a great introductory sport to get you know, kids and families who aren't into any of the shooting sports. It's a great introductory um, sport to do that. Uh, we do have some shooting ranges as well. We have a BB gun range as well as usually one or two pellet gun ranges uh, to let them kind of introduction to kind of open sites. Um, and then all our volunteers are, you know, trained in gun safety. And, and obviously that's uh, the utmost importance uh, at, at those stations. Uh, fly tying, we get a local uh, fisherman's group in Indow to come in and teach the kids how to tie flies. And usually they tie a real fancy woolly burger. Uh, we have lots of nature crafts. We have arrowhead um, necklaces with bear claw necklaces they can make. Uh, we have nature cards. Uh, we have a couple laser shot stations uh, where kids can learn, again, proper way of handling a gun, um, shooting at targets, standing up, um, some moving targets that way. A lot of wildlife conservation stations where they learn about the conservation methods of wild sheep. Um, we had last time, we also partnered with Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's and they brought an 8,000 gallon uh, tank swimming pool, I guess you could call it, that, that was in the convention center. And we had four kayaks that they could actually learn to kayak in there. We always have a rock climbing wall. Um, we had a taxidermist last time, which was really neat. She brought in an aquarium and then she actually had the domestic beetles that were um, cleaning up some skulls. And so she was one of our presenters on I'm a taxidermist and then also ran the station of how do you do taxidermy and had kind of molds and kind of the different phases of what taxidermy was as a station itself. Uh, we have fletching arrows, but instead of actually them putting the feathers or the fletchings on the arrows, we have them do it with a writing pin. So they learn the process of how to repair arrows, but they do it on a pin that has a cool arrow wrap for like Wild Sheep Foundation they can actually take home and actually use it as a writing utensil. Uh, we always do duck calling, um, sometimes turkey calling. We've had the last couple of years, um, some volunteers bringing in decoy spreads. And so they learn how to set up the decoys. There's a blind they can get in, practice their, their duck calls with that. A couple of casting stations with spinning reels. Sometimes we're doing fly fishing um, and they'll have little Velcro targets uh, they try to get. Um, and on and on, I mean, there's, there's a lot of stations, uh, BLM, the Forest Service, just trying to introduce you know, families to a variety of different things associated with the outdoors. Every year it grows. Every, Every year, year. We have more and more people. We had Nevada Outdoor School there last year and we're seeing more and more, not just those shooting sports, but more conservation teams coming in. Yeah, and they're starting to come from other states too. You know, it used to be a lot of just local people that would come and now we're having people drive from New Mexico and, and, and further states away to kind of be here to be a part of just a youth event where they'll, they'll set up their whole station and, and really try to recruit um, mentors for some of their programs that they want locally here, um, which is really neat to see on that. And, and as you said, growing, it has definitely grown. You know, the first couple of years when we hit 600 kids and then 900 kids, it was really exciting over three days. And then we were in the low thousands. And then um, this last time it was a full digital event. So it was a different experience um, but we had 1,696 kids, but the years before that were between 1,400 and 1,600 kids um, in three days. And, and we could do more kids on those Thursdays and Fridays, but it wouldn't be the same quality. And so we're trying to keep those school groups 
to a good quality experience. Um, and then Saturday opening up for the public. And the Wild Sheep Foundation pays to have those kids bust in. They pay for their lunches. Yeah, and with the cost of, you know, even the convention center and charter buses, because we want to get them there right when school starts and get them back right when school ends to make a full day, it, it costs about $34,000 for those three days um, with the AV equipment. And the convention center works great with us. They give us really good deals, the best they, they can um, with their parameters. Um, but yeah, this is all volunteer based and it's, it gets expensive holding it at the convention center for sure. Um, and that's all paid from um, our endowment that we have through the Midway USA Foundation. It's phenomenal. It's amazing how many, like I said, with growing and how many kids we reach out to and parents, I mean, you're counting kids, but those kids are being accompanied by adults. So we're not just having, you know, 1500 kiddos coming through there. We're having, you know, double that with the adults that haven't been exposed. Right. And, and we try to make those connections too. Like we have uh, another organization that has been here almost since the beginning, the Mason TRT's Youth Outdoor Skills Camp. They come and they help run one of our pellet gun ranges, but they also use it as a recruiting tool to advertise to the community on, hey, we do this really cool youth camp in the summer and it's targeted for families, for kids who don't have experience in the outdoors. So it's kind of that place where let's introduce it. And now here's some avenues to get you into the outdoors uh, to, to continue learning on those passions to hopefully become an outdoor person who, who wants to protect and conserve those wild places. It's that next step for sure. Here we have you who introduces, right? And then they go to Mason Ortiz, which is more exposure and hopefully gets them, you know, active in the community. And then eventually, hopefully they come to me as an instructor and they're branching out and repeating that process. That's our three R's right there. It's Absolutely. so important and so critical to our sports. Yeah. And, and we strategically line up events right after that. We do a lot of sign up events. So we also sponsor um, a youth firearm safety class at Reno Guns and Range. And we pay the $50 per kid. And we try to do um, two sessions uh, one weekend. Um, and we pay for that for the kid. And they have to have a parent with them attend that class. So that's really neat. And from there, we had three kids who actually joined on the shooting team that they put on a couple of years ago. We partner with Wasting Arrows and High Desert Archery in Reno to have events that, um, hey, this is going on here. And once we have that email list, we can really start spreading the word on these other events that, that either we're putting on as the Wild Sheep Foundation or other organizations that are putting on to try to, to keep that process going of them continuing to learn these skills. Exactly, exactly. I love it. And that's a great segue here. I have some more pictures of our youth experience here. So what are booths? Because I have pictures of what from my end of the spectrum, right? So we have kiddos as young as three years old come through here that shoot a bow. And we have, and the bows are so universal up to 88 years old shooting a bow to you know, just outreach, community outreach to there's your fly tying table to there's just so much to do is it is a full day event. And it's so hard to find things that are free nowadays. Well, and then we even, you know, because a lot of these, you know, when you start getting youth that are 14, 15, 16, 17 years old, you know, they've, you know, maybe they haven't done all these, but some of the activities they might not be as excited about. So we also have a tracks program as part of this to where, they have a little punch card and they get to go into the sheep show and on the floor we have sheep tracks and they follow those sheep tracks to seven different vendors and they might be visiting Sitka and Sitka would be asking them what they know about camouflage and sheep and kind of connecting it in with what their product is. They're not selling it, but they're educating on conservation. Um, they might go to a backpack um, company and the company's showing them how to fit a backpack well because there's so many different features with those outdoor um, items. This is always sponsored by Leica is, is our big sponsor. They'll talk about what the magnifications are and teach them some basics of how you work binoculars. Um, and then when they get that punch, we actually draw prizes. And so some of the prizes are a pair of $1,500 Leica binoculars, Kinetrek boots, um, a $300 backpack. And so those are for those kids that, you know, are a little bit older looking for kind of that next step 
Um, and they might be into the outdoors already. And they, they understand that, wow, these aren't just you know, a pair of binoculars or a pair of boots. These are very high quality things that will probably be with them for a very long time. It's, it's awesome. It's phenomenal. I mean, I can't speak higher of it. It's, it's perfect. I'm, it, and there's so much for everything. It's not just hunting, it's conservation in general. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a really cool story that I just found out um, last weekend, we sponsored a 3d target shoot at um, a local archery range here in town. And most of the kids, you know, showed up are just borrowing our bows. We had, you know, a small percent have their own bows and sights. And this one girl showed up and, you know, you could tell she had the camouflage bow with the sights on there. And you could tell she had shot a little bit. And I figured she'd probably place in her division based on the sights. Well, she ended up, she was nine years old. She ended up placing first place in her division and she's from Virginia city. And so after the whole day, we had 60 kids shooting every two hours, you know, so we could kind of be spaced out, um, still looking at those COVID regulations. And so we tallied up at the end, found out she had won. And so I emailed the parents just saying, Hey, you know, you can pick up your trophies at the, the range anytime this week. And her dad said, Hey, we're in town. Can we get it now? Cause we're not coming back for a while. And I had a conversation with him. The first time she ever shot a bow was at our last YWCE. And it was the 3d shoot. And he's like, she was so passionate about archery. She wanted a bow after that. She got the bow had only shot it 10 times. And this was just that trickle effect to where she got it, shot it, hadn't shot it in a while, saw sponsoring this event. Uh, her dad saw it, asked her if she wanted to do it. She started shooting again the week before um, and then got this little trophy and now is like so jazzed. She just, um, I interviewed her for a magazine article I'm doing because I think it's really neat to see those connections. We impact all these kids, we think, but we never really get the time to see what does that impact look like down the road. And so it's really neat to hear of, you know, when you get that contact and you see that they're changing and they're, they're actually you know, it's changing their path. They're becoming passionate about something that we introduced them to. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. It gives me the goosebumps. Uh, okay. And that leads us into our Nevada outdoor experience, which is another outdoor and you're, we're heading to Carson for this one. This one is at Capital City Gun Range. And I'm going to let you share all the details. But again, I have pictures from my end of the spectrum, but there is so much more than just archery. Yeah, and this event is a little different. This one's outdoors, so we can do a little bit more. Um, it's at the gun range, so we can introduce um, youth and parents uh, to trap and skeet. Uh, so we can actually do, you know, some first timing with the shotgun. We have coaches there that run a youth shotgun team, um, a competitive level. So the coaches know how to work with kids who've never shot before. Um, again, firearm safety is super important. Um, but we can do things outdoors that we can't do at our indoor one. We have a metal detector club comes and they actually hide all these coins and things and the kids get to use metal detectors and find objects and they get to keep them. We have gold panners that come and teach the kid gold panning. So we get to do events that we don't get to do at the indoor session on that. Um, this takes place usually every June. Um, this year it's June 12th at uh, Capital City Gun Club in Carson City. And it's also different because we reach out to all sorts of any group that has anything to do with the outdoors. Um, sometimes we'll get um, backcountry horse associations there and they'll bring one of their horses and talk about how you pack a horse for getting into the backcountry. We get, you know, a lot of trail groups like Carson Valley Trail Association um, that'll come in and, and introduce families to trails in the area that they can take their families hiking on. Um, and it's a really neat just youth outdoor expo might be a way of thinking about it. Usually we get lunch sponsored by Nevada Bighorns Unlimited. This year, um, we're not serving any food um, with that. But again, this is a totally free event. Um, they just have to show up the day of the event. It runs nine o'clock until one o'clock. Um, we're working on getting donations for raffle prizes. Usually Sportsman's Warehouse donates raffle prizes for us. Uh, but yeah, it's another great experience that that we get other groups involved with that maybe aren't at our sheep show. It's phenomenal. I love that it's outdoors too. With that, I would like to show a video promoting, again, pushing that it's free because again, it's so hard to find events like this and hands-on events that don't cost a fortune. 
and it's that exposure. So I'm going to share screen. I'm going to stop this share screen and I'm going to share the video real quick. Yeah, great free event. Um, we've done it every year except for last year. Um, COVID obviously impacted. We had to shut it down, but we are all on track for this year. It's outdoors, so we get to spread out, um, and it should be another great event. All right. You can see back to that PowerPoint, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, perfect. All right. Okay, and that leads, as we're talking about bringing new conservationists out into the field, that leads to our next step in the process, right? First we expose and then it's bringing them back for more when they're ready for it. And we host with Ryan with the Wild Sheep Foundation, our youth wild game cooking class. And this is a true epitome of field to table. In the morning, I go out and harvest the animal that we're using that day. And the kids come in, I have an instructor cover field dressing. And then we, the kids at that point are all hands on and doing partial field dressing. Ryan, I'm going to let you if, if there's more you want to share there. Yeah, you know, it's just a, a fun event. Again, it's kind of limited because we can only do so many kids, uh, but we get the the game meat is donated and, and Don kind of either uh, figures out where to get that from. And we've done um, chucker and we've done deer, um, done a couple other types of meats and it's great. We work with Nothing To It Culinary Institute. So we have people who truly know about cooking and how to do it well with kids. Um, and it is, they go through the, you know, here's, you know, an animal and let's clean it. Um, and sometimes part of that's a demonstration. Sometimes the kids are doing it themselves. And then they cook two, two different uh, meals, I guess you could say, um, that becomes one meal. And I tell you, every time we've only done it twice, um, but the times that we've done it has been amazing. The kids love the food. They go home with the recipe book. And hopefully it's that next step, like you said, when we talk about you know, eating healthy food. And when, you, when you're, you know, harvesting an animal, it's not just to kill it, it's to utilize it for your family. And so this is a really neat next step for that. It's a blast. It's a lot of fun. It's a couple hours, all hands on parents there. The kids learn, you know, they're, they're cutting, they learn about the anatomy of the animal. They learn about the care, the proper care that goes into the animal. And then they go into like knife cutting to pan usage, to ingredients, to everything. And, and this one is, is a, it's free for the children, right? And then the parent that signs up has to yeah. pay for it. So, well, yeah, how they do it. The parent is just there as kind of like a helper. So they charge me just for the kid and it is a, a pricey one. That's why we can only do it once a year as well with that. Um, but yeah, they just charge per kid on that. The parents kind of there just more or less watching over their kid. Um, and it works out really good. I think we did, I think it's about 12 kids or 15 kids a time. Um, it's a good, good event, a lot of fun. And, and they learn just cooking in general, you know, most not maybe I'm generalizing here, but a lot of kids just don't know the basics of sauteing and they learn that. And even if they're not doing it with game meat, you know, they do it with other meat at, at home and stuff. And so it is fun. It, it's not just wild game, but it's cooking together and it's something different. And on that note, we're always looking for game donations. So if anybody out there is interested in donating a pound here or a pound there, we will not turn it away. <laughs> 
So, and, and finally, um, Ryan has a presence not only with his chapter in banquets, but at other banquets as well, if you want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so the Wild Sheep Foundation is actually um, stationed in Montana. And so um, I work remotely and we have about 15 different chapters around the country. And we also have some affiliates and we help out with that. So for example, Northern Nevada Safari Club International is one of our affiliates. And so we go and when they run their adult banquet, they a lot of times ask us if we wanna be a part of that and kind of try to run like a little kid's corner. Um, and so we'll bring in our hover archery and maybe um, some other hands-on things to help kind of entertain any kids that, that attend those events. Um, so we'll do that with our chapter. So the, uh, in three weeks, I'm actually flying down to St. George, Utah to kind of help with that. Um, but yeah, and it's not just banquets, you know, it's just youth events in general. Um, I think, you know, last year before COVID, we had like 79 different events we were involved with. A lot of those do take place locally because I'm here and I've made connections. Um, even this year with COVID, we have been able to work with some of the archery ranges to do events every month, you know, and kids are out there learning to shoot bows with the mask on. Uh, but we did like a zombie shoot around Halloween at Wasting Arrows and a turkey shoot at um, High Desert Archery. Uh, and then an ornament shoot back at Wasting Arrows where they had the glass bulb ornaments and they're trying to learn to break those um, and a snowman shoot. And, and so we are, we're involved in a lot of different things. Um, we've talked some about of our, our biggest events that maybe we're most proud of with that. Um, and we're, we're looking to be involved in other things. So if you have uh, something coming up, and, and especially if you live in Northern Nevada, um, you know, reach out to me, you know, I might be able to help with some resources uh, or help um, steer with guidance, um, whatever you need. Um, definitely looking to, to get involved in other events that, that are coming up as well. And you do school events, yes? Yeah, so we actually have some wild sheep kits that uh, we check out to schools in Northern Nevada. And I'm a little delivery man as well, dropping those off. The teachers get it for a week. They usually bring it back to me. I repack it, uh, get it to another school. And it's all hands-on stuff. There's consumable for the kids. This year, we even started um, one that we could ship around, especially with distant learning. We wanted to have a kit that we could keep reaching um, either homeschoolers or teachers that were teaching distantly. And even though they might be able to show the school on there, it's at least something that's engaging the kids or a radio caller. And so we had a ship all over the United States. It actually went to Alaska to a tiny town that they didn't even have FedEx or UPS. And it had to go in by hovercraft. And I didn't realize how long that would take. It took over six weeks for it to get there and about seven weeks to get back. So it kind of put our whole scheduling, uh, bumped it a little bit, but uh, yeah, so we're, 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 we're involved with schools quite a bit. Um, we partner with the Nevada, or sorry, the National Bighorn Sheep Center in Dubois. Um, and they actually will zoom into classrooms to teach about bighorn sheep as well. I wasn't rushing you, I promise. I clicked it to make <laughs> sure that I could progress and it decided it wanted to progress on its own. So... <laughs> On that note, if there's any questions, um, you can go ahead and put them in the Q&A box and I will answer them or Ryan will direct, answer them. But on a final note, with 1,300 kiddos that go through the Sheep Show event and with 79 annual events for you a year, I know that you can use the help and I'm always looking for the help to staff these events and they're kid-friendly events. It's pretty painless going through the process to become an instructor or a volunteer. A volunteer can be setting up an archery range or setting up, you know, the equipment to make those those arrow pens, you know, putting up tables, tearing things down. It's not just the event itself. It's start to finish that delivering pamphlets, being your delivery boy. I mean, there's so many ways that people can be a help to making these events happen. And if you are interested in either becoming an instructor with the Nevada Department of Wildlife, and again, we partner with Ryan quite a bit, along with many others, 
I said, or if you would like to help Ryan out with any of his events, his, or if you would like to know more about his events coming up, both of our contacts are on there. So feel free to, I always say, pull out your phone. Everybody's got a cell phone, take a picture, screenshot it. You'll have our contacts there. Um, if there's anything more that we didn't answer, or you don't want to, you know, question here live, feel free to reach out to us and we'll get to you. Um, again, if I can push getting a hold of Ryan, if you have any questions, his events, I'll do one, have him do one more shout out on his events coming up here in a second. Um, okay, we have a question. Are there any events in Southern Nevada? Do you guys do events in the Southern part of our state? You know, we have not. Um, a big part of the as a limiting factor is I am a full-time fifth grade teacher in Washoe County School District. I work part-time with the Wild Sheep Foundation, which is really a another full-time job in itself. So I'm not saying that can't happen. It's just usually I'm flying out after school on a Friday to go to an event. So if it was on a weekend, um, you know, and I could be a part of that event, that would work great in terms of me organizing a full-scale event down there. That could be kind of difficult. Um, but again, if there's enough contacts, I would love to be a part of, of a, an event in Southern Nevada. Absolutely. And there are endow people down there too, that you could depend on to pull together an event as well, just as you have in the Northern part of the state. So if somebody has an event down there that they'd like you to be a part of, then again, reach out to Ryan and, and He'll see what yeah. he can do. Yeah, because we also have uh, the fraternity of the Desert Bighorn. It's kind of like Northern Nevada's uh, Nevada Bighorns Unlimited. It's a chapter down in Las Vegas or based in Southern Nevada that does a lot of wild sheep conservation. And I know they're passionate about youth too. Um, I have gone down there to, to that for our banquet every year. Um, but usually those are kids whose families are attending the conservation banquet to raise money. Um, so I'm usually down there once a year, but it's kind of down there and then back out. But yeah, we have contacts down there. So if you have an idea in mind, um, you know, reach out to me and maybe we can see about putting something together. Awesome. I'm not seeing anything else. So on that note, I'd like to thank our participants and I would love to thank Dr. Ryan Brock for spending his Tuesday afternoon evening with us. I always look forward to seeing you. You're such, such passion about what you do. And I, I mean, it's nice. It's nice to be in a field with somebody who shares that commitment and that passion to the sport. So well, thank you, thank you, thank you for absolutely. Being here. And I love partnering with you guys because your education team is, is just as passionate and it just works really well. Good stuff. So on that note, I have a couple more things. There's that take a break, embrace the outdoors. That's what we're pushing and being responsible with your recreation. I love this picture that Dr. Brock took. I'm going to steal it and use it for all of my webinars from here on out. It's just a great combination of that whole end out and being outdoors and what we push and practice and preach. And that was my daughter's water bottle on a hike we did. And we took a break. I'm like, that's cool. Let me just take a picture of that real fast. I love those water bottles. I give them out at the um, shooting sport clinics because usually it's hot outside. So I give them to the kiddos and they go fill them up. So it's, it's a little perk. <laughs> so, all right. I'm not seeing any other questions. So I think at that, at this point, we'll go ahead and wrap it up again. Thank you to the participants and thank you to Dr. Ryan Brock for hanging out with us today. All right. Thank you, everybody. You want to push that date one more time? Yeah, June 12th. It's a Saturday in Carson City from nine to one. Um, you can just show up anytime. Uh, you know, it's, I don't know if it's really a four hour event, but it's definitely a couple hours. So spread out, come whenever you want and come have some fun with the kids. And it's free. And it's free. <laughs> All right. Have a good night. Thank Ryan, you. tell the family I said hi. I will. All right. Have a good night. Good night.